Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. Okay, so I know it's been a while since I made a video, posted a video, but I'm here with my good friend 5150. And what we're gonna do today is we talked, we had a little bit of a conversation over the phone, and I think what we talked about deserves to be aired out on the air. I agree. Let's get ready to rumble. Okay, having said that, Silver 5150, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Silver Joker. How are you guys out there in Silver Joker land? I know we have differing opinions on where silver is going as far as price-wise in the future. But come on, $1,000 an ounce? That's what I've been hearing on just about every other channel on YouTube. They're talking about silver going to $100 an ounce, $150 an ounce, $1,000 an ounce. What do you think? That's right. That's right. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Um, you are probably the most conservative a person when it comes to expectations for silver. You love silver more than anyone, but you have the most reasonable expectations for silver's performance. And so I say reasonable. Um, you think $25 is reasonable, $50 is reasonable, but the idea of getting, say, 50 or above to you in this current environment probably doesn't sound um, um, very doable in the near future. But I will tell you this, we've been doing it wrong. You talk about $1,000 silver, I talk about $1,000 silver, you don't, but I talk about $1,000 silver, and here's the deal. We will likely see a scenario where silver stackers will experience the $1,000 silver effect, but not actual $1,000 silver. What do you think I mean by that? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but just hearing you say that we could reach $1,000 an ounce, um, you know, uh, I'm, I want to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with all of that. Right. Okay, so let's just be clear about something. Silver wants to climb to these nosebleed levels, but you gotta understand that every regulatory agency, government, central bank, and clearinghouse has an in for silver. They don't want silver to show any brilliance. They don't want it to draw the attention of regular people, especially if it has a chance to be used as a medium of exchange or money, and God forbid, the monetary preference over everything else, because then it becomes way beyond $1,000 or way too valuable to be money because everybody will want it, for that reason. But the thousand dollar effect that I'm talking about is the idea that you'll likely see a chance where you'll be able to trade a silver eagle for a laptop or a set of tires rather than being able to go and change it in for a thousand dollars or seeing it as a thousand dollars on the indexes. That's what I'm seeing. And it's only because of the inflationary environment we're in. I think we have pretty high inflation right now. Well, uh, I'm going to have to disagree with that just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, listen, I, I see what you're saying. I do. But my whole idea is this. I don't think, I think that the most that we'll see in the very near future, and I'd say, let's say in the next three to five years, you know, we could talk about beyond five years here in a minute, but in the next, you know, three to five years, I don't see silver going too much above $25 an ounce. Okay. Maybe 20 So We might reach that, but definitely not this year. Probably not next year. Maybe I'll talk about maybe in the third year or whatever, maybe. But I'm going to tell you why I feel that way. So right now, Jerome Powell, the Fed, they mm -hmm. just raised interest rates another you know uh, quarter point. Right. Right. They just raised interest, and you know why they do that. I do. They they're trying to slow down, I guess, inflation or money velocity or something. Absolutely. They are trying to slow down people spending. People right. borrow money, they spend money. So if they make it a little harder for people to borrow money, then there'll be less money out there for people to spend. So they want the economy to slow down just a little bit so um, so the economy can catch up. That's right. my personal understanding of it. So they don't want, um, and this is this is gonna, probably going to get me in a little bit of trouble, but they don't <laughs> want wages to increase right now. Right. Wage increases means more money. Now, I'm not saying I agree with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please don't, please don't send me dirty letters or you know, anything like that. I don't agree with that. You know, I want to make as, I want to make as much money as I possibly can on my job. I want as many raises as I can get, but that does not help the economy according to the Fed. Okay, so this is how I see it. All right, the economy is starting to. I mean, inflation is starting to slow. Now, I'm not as optimistic as some people and say that it's actually starting to trend downward, although mm -hmm. I believe that maybe it is, but I'm not going to make that claim right now. But mm -hmm. I think the economy is getting better. Like if you listen to the news today, Jerome Powell said that 
uh, maybe one more because the economy is trending in the right. I mean, the inflation is trending in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So maybe another, uh, maybe one, possibly two more rate hikes are necessary in order to, for really to push it going in the right direction. And so I think that if anything was going to happen with silver, with especially over these last three years, right? Definitely through 2021, 2020, 2022. If silver was going to do anything, because silver is supposed to be a safe haven asset, which it is. Correct. Right. The value comes from us. The price comes from the from the market. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, if silver was going to do anything spectacular, it would have done it over the past two years, I believe. And right. so, since it hasn't happened, and things are starting to look a little better. Uh, economy wise, I think that silver is not going to reach too much above the twenty twenty five dollar mark. Okay, now, now I know. You... <laughs> <laughs> I know you oh, got a lot. So to say <laughs> many directions to go here. This is great because one of the first things I'm hearing you say, and you're saying that the idea of money velocity or slowing down inflation is a economic singularity. What I mean by that is, is that if the Fed acts to slow down inflation, it's going to slow down people's desire to purchase. And so people will purchase less. But when you, people, when you say it like that, it makes it sound as if it's just a private sector out there doing everyday spending. But the problem is money velocity doesn't really care who's doing the spending. Because guess what? Spending is a family going out to Applebee's for dinner. And spending is also a company hiring more people. Okay? Follow me, follow me on this. Mm -hmm. If a company slows down its spending, trust me, salaries are going to be in that. Future salaries especially. I'm not talking about layoffs. I'm just talking about not hiring new people. And if you don't hire new people, then how do we overcome this supply shortage this logistical shortage if we can't produce more with more people. See, you can't have it both ways. If you want to slow down inflation, if you want to slow down money velocity, and if you want to cool the economy off, you know, according to the Fed, then you're going to have to uh, let the dollar do its thing. And it's going to show people they can cut from all directions. It's not going to be just private spending. Now, the second thing I'll say is about silver and, and the value of the dollar is that in order for silver to stay where it is, or like we say, like to say silver only trades sideways to down, you would have to assume that there's never going to be any more currency printing taking place beyond now. So the $31 trillion in debt we have is going to stay where it is. The amount of M2 money supply is going to stay where it is. The Fed's not going to print anymore. The governments aren't going to buy, uh, sell treasuries to do that. So there's not going to be any more currency. And so silver will stay at that level because silver is valued in those currencies. It doesn't matter what country it is. Well, I, don't think I don't think governments can do it. I don't think governments can curb it. Because that's the thing. In order for silver to stay where it's going to stay, governments have to either stop spending or cut spending to bring down the need for currency to put in the system to do it. Okay, but that's assuming that what you just said is what is how people see it. Because right now, if you think about it, silver's in demand, but what what is happening to the price of of silver? It hasn't right. really moved that much, and, and demand is moved. high, right? Demand it hasn't is high, moved. and the reason why it hasn't moved that much is because people are still relying on fiat dollars because the economy is at such a place to where people still believe that things are working. Now, you trust me, there are lots of people out there that don't think it is, but mm -hmm. there's enough people out there that think it is to where they're not flocking to these safe haven assets like they have been in the past or like they even should be. I mean, right. you, I mean, you see what I'm saying? I mean, there's not, there's not that, um, there's not that movement as we've seen in the past where, you know, gold was, you know, $300 an ounce right. in, in, you know, the, you know, in year 2000. And then because of the economy and because of, you know, the, the you know, job, jobs moving overseas and like uh, Toyota outpaced, um, you know, Ford and, 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 right. um, you know, uh, GM, all that outpaced yeah, all that. Tesla jobs, actually outpaced all of them. <laughs> right. And jobs started to be a little bit more automated. You know, people started right. worrying about losing their jobs because of robots right. and automation and blah, blah, blah. And so <laughs> that, <laughs> that pushed, the price of gold up because people were nervous about the economy, nervous, nervous about, about the, where right. we're going. But the same thing was happening with, <laughs> you know, with COVID and some of the other things that was going on, you know, this war in Ukraine, all that you figured that that should have pushed precious metals, 
Right. We're talking about silver right now. It should have pushed that into the stratosphere, but it didn't. Right. You know, but see, and so, so I'm thinking, if we, it, so just real quick, I'm thinking if, if it was going to happen, it would have happened. And I think mm-hmm. the time has passed for that to happen. Okay. Well, okay. You're right. It has, it's been passed. It's passed like probably four or five or 600 times. And I'll tell you why it's never manifested. The reason why it's never manifested is because you have to believe there are active elements working to conveniently disconnect silver from dollar market activity whenever they choose. There's no way in the world you could have the value of the dollar fluctuate as wildly as it has and silver sit there on a flat line when silver's denominated in dollars, in currency. You can't have it both ways. You can't have these crazy valuations in stocks because the dollar is weak, these crazy valuations in cryptos because the dollar is weak, and then silver and gold just sit there. They're the same, they're in the same boat. It's it's like having, you know, four people in a boat and the tide goes up and the person that you know, gold and silver, they just, they're ghosts and they flip down through the bottom of the boat and they stay in the water when the tide goes up. It doesn't work that way. They're in the boat with the same asset classes. You know, and, and people, they think it's normal market activity. It's not. So there's two things working against gold and silver, especially silver. The first thing is, is that you do have an active, willing, central planner mentality to keep silver and gold from doing anything brilliant, from staying off the radar, not being noticed, right? The so, second you're t- thing, so you're talking about manipulation just real quick. Uh, yeah, I am. Okay. I didn't want to use the M word because a lot of people don't want to <laughs> hear it. Let's use it, it man. We're going all in okay. today. You know what? We're, you're right. You're right. They are some manipulating motherfuckers. Whoa, whoa, it's, whoa, whoa. He's back. Bro, <laughs> this is family friendly. You right? remember, I'm not editing this. Uh, no, no. It's, I, kept, I kept it clean. I kept it clean. You have to go back and listen to that part. Okay, go look, look, look here. So the thing, and the second thing is, is that there's still this unreasonable faith in currencies. People have been using currencies for so long. They've been known as the coin of the realm for so long that it really takes a lot to break people's fog to see through it and see that the real money is out there waiting for them unused. So that's the thing. Until the dollar weakens to the point to where everybody's asking questions. You know, there's these jokes going on around about the price of eggs and all this stuff, right? So that, again, goes back to what I was saying about inflation as well as um, being, being, you know, one side. It's actually two-sided. The second side of inflation is is that it doesn't affect everything. So there's inflation in the things that we use and need every day, right? And possibly, and that includes goods and services. But there's deflation in a lot of things we don't need. I wonder how much you can get a grill for at Home Depot right now. You get my drift? Mm-hmm. So there's inflation and deflation at the same time. So the thing is, is they put silver in a category of things that nobody needs. And so they're making sure it's disconnected from any inflationary spike, you know, through currencies. So it has those two things playing against it. Faith in the currencies and the central planners working to keep it disconnected from any newsworthy events. Okay, well, it still comes down to, you know, I agree with everything you said. It still comes down to the weakening dollar. And I just don't see that happening anytime soon. Silver is important for a lot of reasons, Mm -hmm. right? It's important because it is absolutely a safe haven asset. It's absolutely a good place to put your money. But a thousand dollars, I would just say, I'm gonna just go ahead and cut out the thousand dollars because to me that's kind of a ridiculous number. I think that if we would just bring out the the positive, realistic qualities of silver's value, is mm-hmm. more valuable than this fanciful um, dollar price. Dollar price because you know I don't think that it's going to reach that anytime soon. I could be absolutely wrong. We could go $1,000 an ounce tomorrow. I don't see it happening. But that's where I stand on it. Let's ease back on these fanciful evaluations on silver and talk about what silver is realistically able to do for an individual stacker. I agree. That is actually actually all that really matters. The intrinsic value of silver when exchanged value for value for something else of value. That's really all it comes down to. Uh, I want to go back here to the wild number <laughs> argument. All right. Oh, so I, I, you know, I, I thought I wanted to draw that back as soon as I said it, but I no, it it's too late, late man. <laughs> too late. You, you, right. That's it. It's that just happens. like Chun says in uh, Rima Williams. It's already too late for that. It's already too it's late. All right. Already too late happens. for that. So my question is this: What makes Bitcoin close the market on February first, two thousand eleven, at seventy three cents, and then ten years later? In March, close at fifty thousand um, dollars per Bitcoin, from seventy-three cents to fifty thousand dollars in a ten-year span. 
What creates that? What causes that? Soon as mm-hmm. I said thousand dollar silver is ridiculous, I knew you was going to bring up Bitcoin. My point is, is that hundred dollar silver is not unreasonable if it has the same wind behind it as Bitcoin. And I'm not talking about the fervor of being something new and possibly even faddish or, you know, an exciting thing that people, shiny new toy people want to play with. I'm just talking about getting the yoke of central planner elements off its neck. If we can get just a crack in that, just a little bit of that out of the way, silver will do spectacular things people never thought it would do. Five thousand dollars, forget it. Thousand dollars, I wouldn't say that. But hundred dollar is definitely um, a possibility on the indexes and the ability to exchange a silver eagle as the best example for something well, you know, beyond 500 bucks is very much a possibility if we continue down the road we're on to where we have a a shrinking supply chain. Now we're going to shrink the the workforce that's going to supply it as part of the deflationary effort to fight inflation, yet we're going to, you know, watch the things that we really need go up in price as inflation and people still have that same level of income to buy it. It, it, is, it is a mess. And this is the kind of energy, the kind of chaos that silver should be playing on right now. So I just threw all that in there just, just to kind of, kind of go. $25 silver, it's going to take everything they've got to keep it down at that level for the next two or three years. Okay. We'll see. But everything you just said makes a whole lot of sense. So and there's nothing really I can say about, you know, the Bitcoin oh, analogy there. and that. I mean, there's really nothing because you're right. I mean, Bitcoin... It did that. It absolutely did that. And in plain sight for everybody to see. Uh, mm-hmm. But like I said, to me, it's an anomaly. It's not a normal thing. Bitcoin is not a normal thing. I it's mean, not as a hard normal as we asset fight, class at all. You're right. right. As, as hard as we fight to normalize it, it just is. And by its, it's, by its nature, it's not normal. It's not meant right. to be normal. It's meant to be abnormal, outside mm-hmm. of normal. And that's the whole point. So it's, it's hard to cool. quantify that. It's hard to quantify that. And it's definitely hard to compare that to Silver's movement or any precious metal movement. But I'll give you- I know, you I got the, extreme I, on that side. I was being <laughs> extreme for the sake of being absurd. It, but look, I'll, I'll give you that. It, it absolutely is a possibility Silver could do that. And I will, I will, you know, I will concede that that is absolutely a possibility. I don't see it happening. I definitely don't see Silver going past 25, maybe 27 this year. I mean, I probably, maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see Mm -hmm. at the end of the year, we'll come back. We'll have the same talk again. (laughs) I I would like to add, I would like to add real quick. So here's the thing. So, so the, the event that would cause silver to move beyond $25 is exactly what I said for the central planners to get their boot off the neck of silver. All right. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? That looks like the federal reserve sunsetting their interest rate hike program. What does that look like? Well, right now we just had a 25 basis point hike. You, you mm-hmm. were talking about that. Mm-hmm. And I think for the month of March, we're going to do the same thing, right? 25 mm-hmm. basis points. And I heard the final basis point hike, 25 basis points, is going to be at the beginning of May. And that will sunset the program because it will reach that target Fed funds rate of 5.25%. And they'll be done. So think about this. So that's May. So May, you no longer have the Fed raising rates. And by the way, when they do that, when our Federal Reserve, which is the most powerful central bank on earth, raises interest rates, it increases the strength of the dollar, which weakens other currencies around the globe. They get into a bind, and then they raise their interest rates to try to combat or try to defend themselves against that. So if the Fed stops, they stop. And then all the currencies start to drift back down to lower levels. And that right there is going to be, I believe, the win in silver sales to not get to 50, um, but definitely possibly to get to 30 before the end of the year. I'm going to call it 30 before the end of the year. I'm going to okay, go out on a limb. Well, I'm going to tell you this, and you'll hear it here first. If silver does reach 35, let's say 35 to 40, mm-hmm. this going to be the psychologically important price. Oh, and what is that? Goodness. What is oh, the psychologically man. important price? It's where if the Silver Sorry. spot price ever gets to thirty-five to forty dollars an ounce and maintains that, let's say for the entire year, then right. that is the psychologically important price, and it'll never look back. The same thing happened with gold. Gold reached a thousand dollars; it never looked back. Some people say that silver's psychologically important price is thirty-five to forty. Right. If it reaches that, then it won't look back; it'll just go on from there. If it does reach that, then I believe that you're right. It you know, sky's the limit after that. But the, but getting there, I don't see the path for that happening uh, anytime soon in the next. Okay, definitely not in the next three three years. Silver Joker, I got a question for you, um, and even the fans um, out there. What is your view 
on the possibility of there being less bullion grade silver available for purchase in the primary or secondary market. That is one of those things that I believe is the curveball for mm-hmm. silver price that nobody right can really see coming. I, I don't know. I mean, I think there's enough silver. You hear it all the time, but there's enough silver mm-hmm. above ground, mined out silver to last, you know, where not be a, well, an issue. Well, it'd be a long time. It'd be a long time. And it's only because I think what I heard was there's a lot of silver in the strong hands of silver stackers, owners. So, I mean, the silver is available, except it's in really strong hands. And so between, you know, the possibility of mines um, getting drier and drier and then big players, you know, I'm not saying that Elon Musk is going to decide that, you know, his uh, that his next plant is going to you know need all this silvering like that or that Warren Buffett's going to revisit 1997. But the thing is, it's very much a possibility that Apple or someone will look and go, geez, man, you know, price of silver is over $35. It's closing consistently between $35 and $40. We should probably um, buy forward, right? We should mm-hmm. buy forward to make sure that we can um, front run some uh, higher prices. Just okay. speculating. Uh, the only way I see silver possibly going to these high valuations is if something like a silver squeeze was to happen, you know, on that scale. If something like a silver squeeze happened, like with GameStop, remember when that Mm -hmm. happened? If if you could get something similar to that happening, where people like, I guess, got to have physical silver, then maybe, maybe we reach that, you know, that uh, psychologically important price and then silver takes off. But barring something like that happening, I really don't see the economy on its own, pushing people ah, to where silver okay. is going to be, right. you know, it's going to explode. Or I see what you're getting at. Yeah. I see what you're getting at. Okay, because in, in the vein we were talking about, all those things we just mentioned, I mean all of them, would actually constitute the silver squeeze required to break the banker's hold, mm-hmm. like it says in the old song and stuff. And so it would be at that point. But is regular economic activity as it is right now with the Fed managing interest rates, you're absolutely right. It is not going to do much of anything. There will be need there'll need to be some kind of black swan, gray swan, silver swan to uh to break that up. Right. And and my my whole point is it doesn't need to be, go there. It does not have to go to fifty dollars an ounce to be right. valuable to you as far as protection for your finances. And that's where I stand on it. All right. Absolutely. Well I think we just about covered everything. I mean and, and you know we're still friends at least, you know, right now while until, we're talking. until the next debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this was fun. <laughs> and where do you stand? Please leave us a comment and let us know where you stand on this. But anyway, that's all I got. Anything you want to add to that, Silver 5150? I would just say this. We've been talking about the silver psychology of it all, but I will say this, guys. If you're out there purchasing right now, I have two recommendations for you. You don't have to follow up on them, but just check them out. If you're looking to buy gold and silver, you really want to consider increments. The smaller the increment, the better because you get more transactional pieces that are assayed and weighed and, and marked as such. Um, go check out Money Metals Exchange. They've got the gold backs there, different denominations, different sizes, right? And they've also got the Valcambi 100 times one silver combi bars. Just those two items. If you can't do anything else, look into those, do some research, decide if it's for you, and that'd be a good play to make as, as we get closer to these higher inflationary times. And there you go. Very well said, my friend. Um, and as usual, you guys know that, uh, you know, Silver Train is rolling. I mean, there's plenty of room on the Silver Train. We'll add another car if we have to. Anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Peace.